Welcome back to BE 110 Continuum Mechanics. Today we're going to consider the kinematics of a moving material region R0 in the reference state of the body B0 that moves and changes shape to become R in the current state of the body B. As before, we'll consider a point in the reference state with position vector capital X but now we'll also consider a point that's a small distance delta big X away and we'll imagine what happens to this vector as the material moves and deforms so that delta big X in the reference state becomes delta little x in the current state of the body. So the reference coordinates are components of the position vector capital X. And the Lagrangian or material description of this motion is little x equals little x of big X and T. The current or deformed coordinates are the components xi of the position vector little x and the Eulerian or spatial description of this motion will be big X equals big X of little x and t. So now we can consider the transformation that takes delta big X to delta little x. Since delta big X and delta little x are vectors, then the transformation that turns delta big X into delta little x must be a tensor, and that tensor is F. F is known as the deformation gradient tensor. It's a rank 2 tensor, it's non-singular, and in general it's not symmetric. Now, in the limit, as delta big X tends to zero, we can use the chain rule to relate the components of delta little xi to delta big xr by the partial derivative del xi del xr. Therefore, the components of the deformation gradient tensor, f i r, are the partial derivatives of the deformed or current coordinates del little xr with respect to the undeformed or reference coordinates, del big XR. Now, since displacement is little x minus big X, then the displacement gradients, del ui del big XR, equal del xi del big XR minus del big xi del big XR, which is fir minus delta ir. In other words, the displacement gradients, which are grad of u, and the capital G there is intentional to represent derivatives with respect to the reference coordinates, which we call g is equal to f minus i. So g is the displacement gradient tensor. It's just the deformation gradient tensor minus the identity tensor. But it's the deformation gradient tensor that we'll use most, and that's thanks to the polar decompositions theorem. And the polar decomposition theorem states that for a matrix or tensor such as F that is square and non-singular, it can always be decomposed into the product of R, an orthogonal rotation, and U, a symmetric tensor, or alternatively, the product of the symmetric tensor V times R, the orthogonal rotation. So here, R is the orthogonal rotation tensor. It has the property that R transpose R equals I, or R R transpose equal I. And U is the symmetric right stretch tensor. So U is equal to U transpose. In the alternative form of the polar decomposition theorem, V 
which is also symmetric. It's called the left stretch tensor. So V equals V transpose. So the deformation gradient can also always be decomposed into a stretch and a rotation because that's the two things that can happen to the vector. It can change its length and it can change its orientation. Now, since the rotation could be a rigid body motion that could be indistinguishable from a change of observer, we really want to get rid of R. We're really interested in shape change and shape change amounts to length change. So we want to find a tensor measure that preserves the stretch U, or V, but eliminates R. Now, U and V could be used, but the polar decomposition theorem is difficult to compute. So instead, what we do is we square F and make use of the orthogonality of the rotation to eliminate it in the product. So we define the right Cauchy-Green deformation tensor, which is conventionally called C, by C equals F transpose F. F transpose would be RU all transpose times RU. And recall that the transpose of a product is the product of the transposes, but in the opposite order. So that gives us U transpose, R transpose, R, U. But R transpose R is I, the identity tensor, which leaves us U transpose U. And since U is symmetric, that would be the same as U squared for short. In component notation, the components of C would be given by F I R F I S which would leave C R S or del X I del X R del X I del X S and notice that if we switch the orders of R and S we get the same expression so C is symmetric which we would expect because U is symmetric and furthermore Notice that the indices of C are the capital letter referring to the components of the reference or underformed coordinates. So C, the right Cauchy-Green deformation tensor, is a Lagrangian quantity. Engineers like to define shape change or strain in a way such that when there's no shape or length change, the quantity is zero. Whereas, if there's no stretch, U would be I, and therefore C would be I. So, to define the strain tensor, we subtract I from C. So, this gives us E equals one-half of C minus I, which is known as the Lagrangian Green's strain tensor. Or, in component notation, its components are del xi del xr del xi del xs minus delta rs. You can see why we've subtracted i from c to get a quantity, a tensor that's zero when there's no strain or no shape change. The factor of one half comes from the fact that this expression is squared. What we'll see later is that the Lagrangian green strain tensor is really a measure of length squared change rather than length change. And that comes about from Pythagoras, namely length changes in multiple dimensions and two or three dimensions involve the square root of sums of squares. So in order to eliminate the rotation, we took F transpose F. That had the effect of squaring U, and therefore the strain defined this way has a quadratic definition. And the one-half there is so that when we do a Taylor series expansion and linearize, that will cancel. So similarly, we could also eliminate R from F by taking the product F, F transpose instead of F transpose F. This now, instead of leaving U, leaves V, i.e. 
F F transpose equals V R times V R all transposed, and that's V R times R transpose V transpose. And again, we have R R transpose in the middle, which is I, the identity tensor, which leaves us V V transpose, or since V is symmetric, leaves us V squared. And this quantity is called B, the Eulerian left Cauchy Green deformation tensor. So, in the same way that we use C to define a Lagrangian strain tensor, we can use B to define an Eulerian strain tensor, which is known as the Almanzi strain tensor, which is sometimes denoted by eta. And eta is one half of I minus B inverse. So if we look at the components of B, there would be Bij equals Fir, Frj, so that would be Ff transpose. So notice this time, it's the components that refer to the underformed reference coordinates that are summing, leaving us del Xi, del Xr, del Xj, del Xr. And notice that this expression is also symmetric in I and J, so Bij equals Bji, and this time the indices refer to the current or the formed coordinates. Writing out the strain tensor then in index notation, we get that eta Ij is one half delta Ij minus del Xr del, del Xi del Xr del Xj, which is also symmetric. So we'll, in class, expand on these definitions, uh, manipulate them, and give some physical examples.